Hey again, it's Jason from Fraser Valley Rose Farm. Well, I've got some roses here that are just begging to be put in the ground, but the catch to that is that my camera equipment doesn't really agree with the rain. So what I'm going to do instead is have a discussion with you about where to plant them, or rather where not to plant them. This is a discussion of rose sickness or rose replant disease. I've been asked about that an awful lot. So let's pop inside where I have more control over the weather and sound, and I'll give you the details. One of the earliest pieces of advice I got from other rosarians about how to plant roses was never to plant a rose, a new rose, in the same spot where you just removed an old mature rose. So for example, in your garden, if you've grown a mature rose for 10 or 15 years and you want to remove it, it's dying or you don't like it anymore, um, and you have a new rose that you want to put in exactly the same spot, there's a caution about that. What they call this is rose sickness or soil sickness or specific replant disease, I guess is what the, the academics call it. And the problem I've always had with this piece of information, whenever I've looked into it, nobody's ever been able to explain to my satisfaction why or what's causing that problem. Uh, it's, a, you know, there's a lot of theories about why that would be the case. You think to yourself, well, if an old rose has lived in the ground for a long time, maybe it's taken out all the nutrients that roses like to have. Um, or could it be a specific disease, a soil pathogen that's a problem? And the, as I say, the problem is that nobody's ever been found the specific pathogen. So being the skeptic that I am, I wanted to reach out and get some more information on that. The first place I looked, obviously, you look on Wikipedia, it's an established disease that affects more than just roses. In fact, there's lots of plants in the rose family, like say apples and pears and cherries that have specific replant diseases to them. Uh, the second thing is that I went on to the American Rose Society website and I found an article there where they discussed a talk that was given on rose replant disease uh, by a university researcher named uh, Traub Winkleman. So to go straight to the horse's mouth here, I uh, emailed Traub Winkleman to figure out what's the deal with rose replant disease and I asked her some specific questions here and I'd like to go over the answers with you just so you can get the benefit of the knowledge that I found from her. So the first thing I asked her, uh, it may sound like a naive question, but is basically is it a real thing? Is it a real deal? And although she was a careful to uh, to say that her research is primarily on apples because that's a more economic crop. I mean she, researchers only research things where there's grant money and so on. And so apples and, and pears and cherries are going to be a more economic food crop than, than roses. So her, most of her research is on apples. And um, she, was, uh, she answered the question and the answer in, in short is yes. Uh, she has done some tests on soil that was taken from fields where roses have been uh, repeatedly grown and found that there was a, uh, an inhibitory factor in those soils against, say, fresh soil, soil that had never had a rose planted in it. Um, and what they did, uh, as, as a side factor, is they, they took some of that soil that was suspected to be, you know, rose sickness soil, and they sterilized it uh, by heat sterilization um, and found that that seemed to mitigate the effects of the, of the disease. So it seems more likely now that the rose sickness is an effect of uh, soil organisms, things that live in the soil that give off inhibitory factors to rose growth. So the next question I had for her is, can you give me any idea of the severity of the disease? Like, how bad are we talking here? And she gave me some numbers here. Again, I'm not sure if this is uh, based on roses or apples, uh, but she said that uh, plant growth in the disinfected soil uh, or the fresh soil was uh, from 150 to 300 percent better um, than roses that were planted in the uh, rose sickness soil. So yeah, that would make a difference to me. If I could find um, a 50 percent to maybe three times increase in the growth of my roses versus uh, you know a, a spot that had a previous rose grown there, that would make a difference to me. Uh, now she also mentioned here, which I found interesting, it was a new piece of information to me, is that the severity depends a bit on the soil characteristics saying that light soils are more affected than heavy soils. So take that for what you can. Um, 
I asked her, does she know the cause? And aside from the fact that they've narrowed it down to being something living in the soil, uh, they don't have a, a specific organism attached to it. Um, so uh, I guess the idea is that if you grow a mature rose in the soil for a long time, that there's things that live in the soil that are either trying to be parasites or, you know, that are trying to attack that, that old rose and that when it's gone and you try to put a fresh rose in there, it's just not strong enough to fight off those kinds of pathogens or those kinds of problems. Uh, so uh, also she mentioned that nematodes were affected or part of the problem. Uh, so that's again, another piece of information. If it's specifically nematodes, uh, that's uh, something she mentions a way to combat in a second here. The, uh, the third thing I asked was about treatments. You know, what, like, how long does this last? Can you just skip a year? You know, or is it, does it last longer? What is the treatments that she's recommending for it? Um, and she says that no, they don't have clear recommendations for it, uh, but the options of avoiding rose plantings for five years would not be sufficient. Uh, not without an interplanting of some other crop in the meantime to mitigate the factors. Um, the disease stays in the soil I've seen on Wikipedia for 15 years. She mentioned here 20 to 30 years, so um, that's, that's a long time. Uh, the second one is that uh, I asked about, some people have recommended, and I've seen articles talking about adding mycorrhiza or a product like myke to the planting hole to see if you can get the, to mitigate the rose uh, sickness. And uh, she said that the, the literature is scarce uh, on that, um, but uh, some apple growers use these and other plant strengtheners. Uh, but uh, if applied, she'd suggest to dip uh, the plants directly into a solution to bring the mycorrhizal fungi directly to the contact of the roots. So uh, that's, if you wanna try that out, that's a good measure. Um, and of course, if you can replace the soil or plant in a new spot, you know, that's the only sure way to get around it. And I asked her if she had any alternate advice to the regular, uh, the regular advice that's been offered on this topic. And she did actually have one, which is that if you're trying to combat the nematodes portion of the problem, that you can plant the uh, Tajidis uh, patula nema mix, or that's a, a marigold. Uh, and you can uh, effectively reduce the nematodes in the soil around it, but also improves plant growth and, and uh, in replant situations. Um, so that was a good piece of advice. I think uh, in another article that she had written or the article on the uh, American Rose Society, she talked about interplanting, intercropping of other crops in between rose crops was a good effective way to try to stop this. So um, that's the information I have from her. So number one, it is real. Number two, it is severe. Uh, or severe enough to be worried about. Number three, a new piece of information, that it's more severe on light soils than on heavy or clay soils like mine. Um, and that if you want to try to combat it, it may be worth a try to try the uh, mycorrhizal inoculants uh, and certainly an interplanting with uh, marigolds, uh, specifically the cultivar Nema mix was something that she recommended as a way at least to combat the nematode problem that's attached to this. All right. Uh, I expect you might have some questions about this. Um, I would do my best to answer them, but thank you so much to Trod Winkleman for taking the time to give me some answers on this. And uh, if you'd like to leave any comments of your experience or questions below the video, I would sure appreciate it. I'm out to go plant some roses.